Knock, knock. My name is Austin Torres, and welcome to Would You Die, the show where we examine all the monsters and villains of pop culture. Today we're looking at one ugly mother. That's right, it's the Predator. What a spooky boy. Stick around and find out if you stand a chance. The Predator first appeared in 1987 when the most badass film ever shot graced us with its presence. You know, Predator. The Predator was first played by Kevin Peter Hall, best known for his role in Harry and the Hendersons. He was Harry. Fun fact, the original Predator performer was supposed to be Jean-Claude Van Damme, but he was fired because frankly he wasn't physically imposing enough when compared to the rest of the cast, and he had issues with the suit. I'm taller than Jean-Claude Van Damme. Kevin Peter Hall turned out to be the right man for the job, playing the Predator in both films 1 and 2, and providing the physical dominance and athleticism needed to bring the part to life. Sadly, Hall died just before his 36th birthday. Rest in peace. Predator was directed by John McTiernan and features a badass cast of badasses like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Carl Weathers, Bill Duke, Jesse Ventura, and of course, greased up biceps. Can't forget this film features the greatest handshake of all time. Predator is also a prime example of genre bending movies. For instance, how it starts off as a generic 1980s shoot 'em up action flick before suddenly shifting into a sci fi slasher. There are almost no films quite like this one, and definitely not one with as much testosterone. Whenever I watch Predator, I can feel my chest hair growing. It was also a huge favorite for both myself and my grandpa. We would watch this movie together all the time. He would actually call me while I was up at MSU just to tell me that it was on, and I'd have to be like, Grandpa, I'm in class. Predator holds a special place in my heart. And when you have a film so close to your heart, you have to have sequels of diminishing returns. Predator 2 came out in 1990, although this one's more of a sci-fi action than a sci-fi horror. Kinda like Aliens and T2. T2 is Terminator 2. Instead of hunting special forces in the jungle, Predator 2 features our favorite intergalactic baddie hunting drug cartels and Danny Glover in the concrete jungle. Not nearly as prolific or as good as the original, Predator 2 is still a fun time. One of those sit down and watch while channel surfing movies. Also, Predator 2's score slaps way too hard. Alan Silvestri wrote some fire on this movie. The 2010's Predators first came to be when Robert Rodriguez wrote a Predator script for 20th Century Fox in 1994. Also, just gonna say it, Predators should have been Predator. They sat on it for 15 years before finally greenlighting it, and we get everything in this movie. A fun, diverse cast with Adrian Brody in his discount Batman voice, a pre-Oscar Mahershala Ali, post-Spider-Man 3 Topher Grace, the wonderful Walton Goggins, Lawrence Fishburne's in there somewhere. And Machete. Machete don't text. There's predator dogs and super predators, and I love the idea of predators abducting dangerous humans and dropping them onto a game preserve planet. It's like Pizza Planet, but with the most dangerous game. Not like Pizza Planet. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, we get to 2018's The Predator by writer-director Shane Black. If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. Moving on. The Predator franchise would also feature two crossovers with the Alien franchise, a bunch of novels, a couple video games, a lot of comic books, and of course, toys. Toys. The Predator's badass design was created by legendary visual effects artist Stan Winston, best known for his work on Jurassic Park, Aliens, and The Terminator. That's right, Stan Winston made both Predator and Rexy, who I covered in the last episode. Another fun fact, Stan Winston was designing Predator sketches while on a plane with James Cameron when Cameron suggested adding mandibles because he always wanted to see an alien with mandibles. That's a good enough reason for me. But what exactly is a predator? I'll show ya. Predators, also known as a yaucha. A what? 
are an advanced species of extraterrestrial warriors who love the thrill of the hunt. That's not an exaggeration. Their entire culture is based upon hunting other dangerous life forms. The most dangerous game being the Xenomorph. But predators also like to hunt humans too as evidenced by the solo predator films. And boy, are the Yauk just scary. They stand at over eight feet tall and weigh well over 500 pounds in that badass armor. And we all know what's under that badass armor. Predator culture also has an honor code, which includes only hunting worthy game, not killing the sick elderly or pregnant, and you know, blowing yourself up when bested in combat. Honor. There's so much to talk about when discussing predators, like the super predators, the ancient, the preddy dogs, the ultimate predator. But for now, let's talk about how a predator can kill you. Plasma Caster. The predator is a sports hunter. And what's a hunter without his rifle? A pretty lousy one. That's why our pretty boy employs a top of the line plasma caster. Not as elegant as a lightsaber, but not as clumsy as a blaster. It gets the job done. Wrist blades. Most people wear watches on their wrists. The predator wears f***ing swords. Eat your heart out, Wolverine. Other weapons. The predator also employs an arsenal of other weapons, including the smart disc, spears, nets, and active camo. Each predator is armed to the teeth, kind of like Boba Fett on steroids. Brute strength. Predators are f***ing strong, man. Only a space alien can beat the shit out of the Terminator like that. Spine ripping. The Predator's signature move is ripping out a dude's spine with the skull and everything like he's in a Mortal Kombat game. Fun fact, Predator is in a Mortal Kombat game. Mortal Kombat 10 features Predator as a guest character, along with fellow Would You Die alumni such as the Xenomorph, Leatherface, and Jason Voorhees. But beating Predator in a video game isn't quite like beating one in real life, so don't be yelling, get over here, just yet. You ain't Scorpion. Yes, a Predator bleeds, but that doesn't necessarily mean you can kill it. Well, easily, at least. The Predator is highly resistant to physical damage, such as gunshots, and is capable of giving itself medical attention. However, Besting it in combat. Good luck, my friend. But if you're able to kill a predator and land a kill shot, Yes, that's what killing you means. Then beating a predator is possible, however unlikely. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Predators aren't afraid to commit suicide after defeat, and they do that by detonating a nuclear bomb. You don't want that going off. Teamwork. The most likely way to kill a predator is to team up with other people to get the job done. Teaming up with another predator doesn't hurt either. It's also important to note that predators see using thermal vision. You can actually use this to your advantage by cooling yourself down. The Arnold method is with mud. Escape. You're most likely not going to kill a predator. You ain't Arnold. But you can possibly escape. A good method of which is using a helicopter. Get to the chopper! He said it. According to my count, predators killed 97 people. Across six films, that averages 16.17 kills a film. Don't forget that two of those films are crossovers with Alien, so Predator has to share kills with those pesky xenomorphs. While Jason still has the highest kill count out of all the horror icons I've covered so far, the Predator now has the highest kill average. To really see how brutal a Yautja can be, let's look at Predator. This Predator encountered 11 characters, killing 9 of them. However, the Predator's honor causes it to ignore Anna, an unarmed prisoner, so it's really 9 out of 10 characters that the Predator is hunting, making Arnold Schwarzenegger the lone survivor. That earns the Predator a kill rate of 90%, resulting in him being awarded 9 out of 10 skulls. Now that's a high lethality rating. The Predator is now the third horror icon to be part of the 9 Skull Club, joining Jason Voorhees and Victor Crowley for that honor. The Predator's pretty dang good at killing, earning himself his name. So if you don't reach the chopper, would you die? Based on these results, you have a 100% chance of dying when encountering the Predator. Duh. He'll make sure you have time to bleed. Knock, knock. Who's there? Dude, that's not a joke. That was murder. Do you have a suggestion on who or what I should cover next? Comment your thoughts and check out our previous episodes and other fun shows here at Three Wise Men Media. Don't forget to subscribe. Tune in next time when we discuss some other spooky icons. Until then, I'm Austin Torres. Try not to die.